Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're doing another recap of Married at First Sight, Season 13, Episode 10. So, it was a little bit different this week. Uh, some great things came out of it. Some went south, but we are going to talk about it. So, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. If you like the video, smash that like button and drop a comment down below. So, let's unpack what happened in tonight's episode. So, they are at the midway point, um, being that they have hit 30 days. So, they're celebrating their month anniversary just like they've done for every other season. This is no exception. So, we're going to start talking about Michaela and Zach. And it did start off kind of rough. Um, they did a little salsa dancing with Mirla and Gil. And Zach was definitely all in. He was excited. He was enjoying himself. However, Michaela took a back seat to the dancing. She was like, I just don't want to do it. And my thing is, is that, you know, I understand sometimes you might not want to do something, but when you're dealing with your wife or husband or your significant other, this is a great opportunity to find things to, you know, learn and enjoy, you know, see if this is something that you can enjoy with your partner. Um, it was definitely an awkward situation. I mean, especially I couldn't imagine how Zach felt in that moment. Especially because, you know, Mirla and, and, and uh, Gil were bonding and enjoying themselves with the dancing. And he ended up dancing with the instructor. So, I know he was definitely feeling some kind of way. But I also think it's coming off of what we saw last episode when, um, you know, they were blindfolded. And when, you know, Michaela asked Zach about whether or not you know do they see a future in this and he was like i don't see one what right now but that don't mean that you know we won't have a future and she took it hard and i think that's where the coldness come in because she didn't want to feel like you know it felt like rejection to her and that's understandable and i'm glad that gil kind of you know um lighten up the situation when they had a conversation with them you know, to let Michaela know is, you know, in that moment, because of what you guys just coming off of, it didn't seem like it was a future, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't open to seeing where this could actually go. Anything could change at any given minute. We've seen that with all of these couples. So I'm glad that he put that out there and, you know, slowly but surely they seem like they were warming up to each other. Um, they also did their month, month anniversary gifts um you know i thought that was really really cool what they did um and my thing is it kind of broke the ice between them and you know the whole thing with him putting the roses on the bed kind of taking that step back to where they began and how they connected with each other right off the start from the honeymoon night so they can i mean because a lot has happened to this couple i mean from everything from you know, the virus to, you know, this whole so-called miscommunication with, you know, the taking the dog out. And it just led from one thing to another. And it's nice for them to kind of, you know, kind of do a reset is what I would think I would call it. So that was good to see. And then, and then what made it even nicer is the dinner that they had with the rest of the couples because Michaela now says she love her some Zach. Zach is like, uh, I'm almost there too. So it looks like they're on the right path. And they made some apologies to each other. They're trying to move past everything that has happened in the past couple of weeks. So I honestly think this was a great thing to see. Progress is always good. And I'm the type of person that I'm always here to allow people for grace, for room to progress. So that was an awesome thing to see with Zach and Michaela. So let me know your thoughts. I mean, I know we saw some previews coming down the pipeline, but just for right now at the 30 day mark, it was definitely nice to see that they put in the work to get to where they need to be at this point. So Let's see what happens with Zach and Michaela in the future. Okay, who's up next? Let's talk about 
Rachel and Jose. Oh my goodness. I didn't know what was going to happen to these two because last week was uh hmm crazy to say the least especially with everything with this oh you call me by another man's name and then that whole you know cussing out that he had to what that he had done with Rachel and you know ugh, it was a horrible situation to say the least and if you know if you don't know what I'm talking about go check out episode nine However, she made sure she got the expected apology that she wanted from Jose. She wasn't letting him out, no way, no how. It was like, if you want me back in your life, you got to get that apology that has some meaning to it. And he was trying. I, I know I can tell it was a struggle on his face, you know, but... He realized that, you know, he had to dig deep, you know, and that's the thing about a marriage. Sometimes you have to do what's uncomfortable, you know. I mean, maybe as a single person, he maybe handled things differently, but this is your wife. And you have to also consider your partner's feelings, your partner's needs. And this is something that Rachel obviously she needed from him and she expected that from him and he made sure that that expectation had been met so i'm glad that he did put in the work and i also was excited about the fact that they decided to stick it out because looking at some of the comments from social media last week you know people was telling her to run 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 get out you know marriage is work love is a commitment so sometimes you need to figure out things where, you know, you need to work through. And this is an unconventional situation. This is not something that they dated for three years and then decided to get married. These people didn't even know each other existed 30 days ago. So, you know, it, it's going to take that much more due diligence for these couples to make it through. And I'm glad that they hashed it out. You know, and especially when he came back and he said, you know what? And when he created that whole uh, month anniversary type of um, gift for uh, Rachel by taking her to the baseball uh, park and having a little picnic because she's a fanatic of baseball. So, you know, he made sure that he showed that he listened because she mentioned that on the night that they got married that that was something that, you know, she ended up going to the World Series by herself. So he made sure that he remembered that and applied it to the month anniversary. But he did also say, I have to work on my listening skills. I have to work on my communication skills. She even said, you know, I also have to allow you the space to, you know, kind of calm down, think things through and allow them, you know, the space to be able to talk at a later time, maybe not in that a moment. So I'm glad that they actually took that time to make it work. That's what I look for. And that's how that's supposed to be. You know, I mean, if everybody take off and run, you'll never be in a relationship. Sometimes things take work. It takes apologies and things like that. And then the night of the, you know, the couples all sitting down together. I mean, they are back in love with each other. I, You know, I was calling BS on that scene last week anyway because it was just too weird. They go from being 100 with each other to going left, and now they're back 100 with each other. So the love didn't go anywhere. And Rachel says she loves him. He loves her. they back playing kissy face with each other in front of, you know, they definitely don't have problems with PDA or public display, displays of affection. So... It's nice to see that they worked it out. And that's, I would say, my two, top two couples this week was Zach and Michaela and Jose and Rachel because they have been struggling, especially Zach and Michaela. And to see both these couples put in the work, they allowed each other the, the space and a safe space at that to land and be able to do the work to progress to where they are. I'm absolutely loving that today. So, you know, I have nothing bad about these two. I wanted to see the work. You got to do the work when it comes to a marriage. So 
kudos to them. Okay, Mirla and Gil. Oh my God, they are just absolutely adorable right now. I got one question for Mirla. That man is fine, fine, a fine. I don't understand why she ain't grabbing and saying, oh my God, you producers, get out. I need a moment. But who knows? Maybe they are. We just don't know and they're not saying. But what can you say about these two? They, even though they have been moving on a slower level when it comes to intimacy, their intimacy is actually building in other ways, which is so amazing to see. Because, you know, it's not all about the lust of it all, even though I said Gil is fine. But they're actually feeding off of each other's chemistry. They're feeding off, um, taking that time to build the connection that they have. And it's genuine. It's organic, which is what I like about them. And one thing I will say about Gil, he is being extremely patient because we all knew what Mirla in the beginning looked like. And she seemed like now that she realized Gil is coming from a good place and he's a good dude, you know, it seems like she's kind of softened a little bit towards him. As we see, she's kissing this man, so that's some progress. But I'm loving these two right now. Again, I like to see progress i don't like people staying stuck in the same place and not doing the work and they're another couple that is doing the work even the patience that gil is giving that takes work and i know that that's one of the things that he said at the dinner but let's talk about some of the things that they did with their little gifts can you believe Mirla actually had a little uh, romantic setting with rose petals and everything. And especially coming off of what, and you know, I'm not going to touch too much on what Gil did because actually it was really, really cool. He paid attention. They did a wine tasting and she actually liked it. She did. And they're just joking with each other and smiling and they're happy. But the fact that Mirla actually set up a little romantic setting for Gil especially how so, you know, she was slow moving in the beginning. I'm so happy that she did that. It shows progress. It shows that she's tapping into her emotions when it's coming to Gil. And it's slowly but surely leading down that direction where that connection could be solid. I'm liking what I see. I mean, and then they're creating this united front when they were trying to help Michaela and Zach at the salsa dancing you know, and having conversation about their relationship look like they're the leaders of the group. Kind of how like, mm, I would say Vincent and Brianna was in season 12 and Woody and Amani was in season 11. They're like the spokespeople of the group and they tend to give their advice. And so even though they're not further along, maybe like Jose and Rachel, they're still in a good place where they can tell everybody else, you know, pretty much how the progression should grow, should go. But I'm, I'm proud of Miller because, I mean, I didn't know what to expect from her. And now that she's actually softening up with Gil, kissing him, showing him affection, you know, and he's being extremely patient, calling her his little princess. Now, he will speak up with some of the things that he said, hey, I... I you know, I'm not cool with this. I'm not cool with that. But she's receptive and he's not coming across as being vindictive, which is great. So that works for both of them. But even at the dinner and, you know, he's like, I'm falling in like, and you know, I mean, Ryan was like, yeah, you falling in like you love that girl. And I can see it. He might not be outspoken about it. And I can also see Mirla is kind of feeling some love for him as well. So I'm happy for these two. I'm looking forward to seeing where they could go. I mean, we still got four more weeks left. So I hope nothing major happened because tonight was a pretty good night for three out of the five couples. We'll get to the final two because they're going through a rough patch right now. But um, I'm happy for Mirla and Gil. So three out of five tonight so far, so good. Okay, so we got... 
to talk about Ryan and Brett. So, unfortunately, um, Brett's little dog, he is too cute. He kind of had me in tears because I'm really close to my daughter's dog, Asher. So, I couldn't imagine going through that. But um, she had to put her dog down and it had been a very, very tough week for her. But um, she made it through. So, you know, I, I understand the pet moms and dads out there. I mean, it's like family. So I totally get where, you know, the sadness and the heartache came from. However, um, it was also their month anniversary. And Ryan had set up this whole thing at I Pick Theaters. And for you guys who don't have one in their city, we have one here in Chicago land and suburbs as well. It's really nice. It's really nice. So if you haven't, go check it out. But they used um, the movie of their wedding um, 30 days ago and the vows and stuff that they took and everything. And I thought that was really cool. Brett seems like she really, really enjoyed it, which was it's, it's heartbreaking because she really likes this guy. But for some reason, Ryan just can't get there. And I usually say that term comes from if you watch The Bachelor and The Bachelor, Bachelorette. I don't know if I could get there. I don't see Ryan getting there with her, with this whole... He can't even find the, those feelings. He's waiting for them to happen. And my thing is, is that if he has no connection with this, with this young lady, my thing is he's not really into her. And I, I don't understand, he, and he seemed like he's trying to force himself to do things and to feel things, and it's just not happening organically, which is, it looked like it's killing him, because he signed up to be part of his process, and he even said that he feels less now than he did when he was actually at the altar with, with Brett. That is so crazy. So somewhere along these past 30 days, you started out at the lowest point, even at the altar and lost it. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, she had issues with his lifestyle, being a country boy. I know he hunts and things like that. So I don't know if progressively that was a turn off, but whatever it is, something has really got him turned off, not turn. I mean, turned off. So, and it's so unfortunate because she seems to really like this guy and it's just not there. And I mean, even though he did that for her, when they were at the dinner with the other couples, it was, he was saying, oh yeah, I want this woman to know how much I appreciate her and how great she a person. But when he get into his, um, private confessionals, He's like, I don't understand. I, I can't feel anything. I don't know where this is. I, I don't know where it's going to come from. I'm just not there. I've been trying. And I'm like, oh, my God. So these next four weeks is going to be torture for both of them. It's torture for her because the feelings aren't reciprocated. And she's been through this before in previous relationships, waiting to be chosen, as she said. But also for Ryan, because he's in a situation where he's not connected to this person. And I mean, normally it goes left where folks and we, you know, we haven't seen the full season yet. Because when folks are checked out with their partners, things tend to go badly. But so far, he's trying to maintain his demeanor and... It's just so unfortunate that it's not there and that the process doesn't seem to be working for him. So... I don't think this couple is going to work. Um, and I, I don't, I'm, it looks like it might get progressively worse, you know, because there's this whole thing about him and being on um, the, a dating site. So we'll see what happens, but it's, a, I don't think it's a, it's a no-go for these two. And then last but not least, Bao and Johnny. Now, their storyline kind of threw me for a loop because they started off great this episode when he actually did the um where they jumped out of the jumped out of the plane together and that was something on her bucket list that he remembered that she wanted to do 
So he wanted to make sure that that's something that they did. And they were really excited. They were having a great time. You know, she ran and jumped upon him. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm thinking, okay, we got maybe four good couples out of this episode. Well, I was sadly mistaken. Because then they had their little lunch and, you know, Johnny is saying, and it's confusing because he's saying consistency and Bao is like, I need you to take initiative. So she wants him to come grab her, come touch her, come do this, take the initiative. And then I guess Johnny needs her to be consistent on what she says and following up with what she does. So there's obviously some things that we're not seeing with this couple. And it was definitely manifested when it all came out at the dinner with the rest of the couples. Because we have, when it's their turn to talk about where they are, and she was like, well, you know, we have some things that we've been going through and some ups and downs. And, you know, I cook all of these gourmet meals. And and Johnny is over there talking about, stop lying. You cook one meal. And I'm like, okay. Uh, Bao, what you doing? Only thing I remember her cooking is that salmon meal that he tried for her. And I think that was about two or three episodes ago. But then they show flashbacks of him coming home, cooking one episode with some meatballs with pesto sauce. And then she ate his salad and he was like, oh, that's okay. That's okay. But it really didn't, from what we saw from flashbacks, we didn't see all these gourmet meals and that definitely was a turn off for him because of the fact that um she haven't been cooking gourmet gourmet meals and i'm like okay bow why are you lying about that my thing is if you just don't want to put the truth out there just say you know and i please don't lie by an omission and don't lie but you know, we got a lot of ups and downs we're going through. We're trying to work through them, but we'll get there. And leave it at that. Don't create a whole story about something in your relationship that never happened. Just as Johnny said, to save face, not looking bad. It only going to blow up in your face because I can guarantee you production made sure that we knew what, what Johnny was saying was that uh, she ain't been cooking. She's saying one thing and doing uh, something else. And then I guess she made a childlike remark when they were at lunch. And that, again, was a turnoff. I just think there's some fundamental issues with both of them. I honestly think that Johnny is way too far in his head. And instead of being stuck in his head, you know, communicate. And communicate like an adult. Um, on Bao's side... You need this man to take the initiative to be assertive with you or you want to be assertive with him. Just do it and ask him, I need a hug today. Can you come hold my hand? Can you come jump my bones? She's the type of girl. Now, I'm wondering because she was saying that she would like sex every when she was talking to Dr. V last week. I want sex every night or at least every other night. Was she telling the truth then or was Johnny... You know, we're right. You know, I don't know. It's it's kind of convoluted with this couple. So, I honestly think that if they took a step back, breathe, communicate well, and have intelligent communication and quality communication and be consistent with the behavior that come along with the communication, Johnny, get out of your head. I mean, one moment, I don't know. I mean, at least Jack, I mean, Zach, I'm sorry, kind of straightened up his emotions emotions and grounded himself. You need to do the same thing. And I mean, Jose can't come to your aid all the time and talk you out of it. And the crazy thing was so funny is Bao come out of the restaurant looking for the Uber. Your dude is standing over there up against the door like... 
talking and spazzing and you barely looked at him and looked at the camera. Where's our Uber? Oh, we're about to leave. What was that? I don't know. It's just it's something that's a miss with those two. And, you know, they started off so strong until it didn't. So I don't know what to believe. I'm going to have to wait and watch. You know, I, I like to speak on what I see. Sometimes stuff is overly edited. So I take it with a grain of salt and I'd be objectional. I wait to see people at the, after the season is over so they can speak their truths. But from what I'm seeing with Johnny and Bauer, it's not looking good. I and mean, who knows? Things can change. Everybody said that about Jose and Rachel last week. So we will most definitely see what happens with these season 13 Houston couples in the next four weeks. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, drop your comments below. What do you think? Do you think the other three couples, Zach and Michaela, Jose and Rachel, Merle and Gil, is on the right path? Are they going to stay in that place? Johnny and Bao, do you think they can rebound? And as for um, Brett and Ryan, do you actually think Ryan can snap his fingers and catch feelings? I don't think so, but hey, maybe you guys do. So, Sound off in the comments. So until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you soon.